Welcome to Stay Tuned's Garage, my name is Alex, and today I'm going to be swapping the captive rotors on my Honda Accord to just normal brake rotors that aren't a pain in the ass to work on. Alright, so ever since I've had this car, since I got it from my sister about three, almost four years ago, the car has had warped rotors, which usually it's not a super huge deal, you could simply just take your rotors off, go get them resurfaced. If they're too far worn out or it's too badly damaged, just get new rotors, you know, 50 bucks a piece, no biggie. Um, however, Honda decided to add a captive rotor system in the, um, the CD4 and CD5 year, uh, model Honda Accords, which I have one, I have a CD5. Um, so if you don't know what that is, I'll go ahead and throw my car up on the jack right now and I'll, I'll show you guys what a captive rotor is. Oh, it's raining. Nice. Um, I'll show you guys what a captive rotor is and um, you'll see why it's such a pain in the ass to work on. All right, so here is what a captive rotor system looks like. So in the traditional rotor, um, you would have your hub that would sit flush, or you would have the hub which you wouldn't even be able to see because the rotor would sit over it. So as you can see here, the rotor is actually behind the hub and is bolted to the hub from the front. So, you know, this would all be cool and dandy if you could just unbolt it and then the rotor would come off. But in order to replace this rotor in a regular brake service, um, you would actually have to do the normal brake stuff, remove the caliper, all that, and then, well, I mean, before you did that, actually, before you even took the wheel off, you'd have to get rid of this axle nut, um, and you would have to then do the brake service stuff, take, take the, off the caliper, all that, then you would have to actually take the hub off of the vehicle. So you would either have to pull the hub with the, with, uh, the puller, um, like you know the, those hub pullers that like bolt on to three of these and you just pull with a slide hammer or you could um, remove it with the wheel bearing and remove the wheel bearing afterwards. But either way you have to remove the wheel bearing and if you've ever removed the wheel bearing you know that in the removal of a wheel bearing you usually damage it. So for just a regular brake service where you would have to replace the rotor, you almost always have to replace the wheel bearing as well and it's a way bigger job than just brakes. So I don't know what Honda was thinking when they did this. There's a couple manufacturers that did this as well, but um, Honda was a big one. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm not only gonna replace my brake rotor, I'm also gonna replace my entire brake system to um, with the 98 Acura CL uh, brake system that would, that supports the regular hubs. And then now from now on, whenever I buy front brake rotors, I just have to buy 98 Acura CL brake rotors and I'll be good from there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and list all the parts you need in order to do this job. So here are all the parts that I am going to be using uh, for this conversion. Um, first off, we have some brake pads. These are Hawk Performance brake pads. Um, you don't have to go for that brand. These are just uh, I'm, these are just my my car's brake pads. I'm pretty sure these and the Acuras are the same. So just get normal brake pads that you normally do. Um, I got some new brake hardware and some new slide pins just to kind of refresh everything. All right, these brake rotors are for a 98 Acura CL, so they are no longer the captive rotor brake. Then I have a Timken um, brand new wheel bearing because the old one got destroyed, so you can see over there. Um, and the part number is right 
right there. 513098. Timken. So it's not actually a bearing and hub assembly, it's just the bearing assembly. Um, I don't know why they put that. All you get is the bearing, you don't get the hub, so um, don't think you're gonna get this hub. This hub is actually the hardest part to get for the swap. Um, so this hub is a 1998 Acura CL four cylinder um, hub. So there, it's a 1998 through 1999, they made the Acura CL that came with this hub. Um, but they made two, two different hubs for those years. One was for the four cylinder, one was for the V6 model. Um, the V6 model has a different inner diameter or has a different di outer diameter of the shaft that goes into the bearing. So you can't use the V6. It has to be a four cylinder hub. Um, and unfortunately, no aftermarket companies um, make this hub. So you can't just go to like Rock Auto or any of those websites and buy this hub. Um, I trust me, I searched everywhere. The only people who make it or who, who have this hub is OEM suppliers um, and dealerships. So if you want to get it from a dealership or an OEM supplier type of thing, like those warehouses that just have overstock of Honda OEM parts, um, you can do that. However, I think each hub was around 100 to $150 if, if I wanted to buy that. So what I did is I just sat and I waited and I checked my junkyard, my local junkyards vehicle list. I waited, 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 waited till I saw one of the cars come in. And, um, and just the other day one came in. So I went, got the hubs and here I am. I actually ordered all these parts like two months ago and I've just been waiting for, for the hub. So, um, I got the hubs for 10 bucks each sure beats $150. So I think it was worth it. And to go ahead and make it a little easier for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and make a list of all the parts I used and where you could get them. Um, I'll even put a link to get the hub for that $150 price or whatever price it is. Um, if you really wanna do it like that, you can buy it from there. If you wanna do what I did, you can do that as well. I didn't skimp out on the parts I bought. I'll put it that way. Um, like Timken is a pretty well-known and trusted brand. So is Bosch. Um, and I was gonna go like vented and, or like drilled and slotted rotors, but uh, I just went with good old normal ones because I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. And then I went with some really nice brake pads cause um, yeah, I love my car and I want good parts on it. So. So yeah, but I'll go ahead and list these parts and then I'll put similar parts that are a little more, um, how do I say this? More economic for you guys. All right, so today is actually the next day, but nevertheless, um, I'm pretty sure I covered everything yesterday as far as the whole swap goes. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I did before I jacked the car up uh, with the full weight of the car on the wheel. I loosened the axle nut. This is a 36 millimeter socket. See it on there on my drill or on my impact. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and take this axle nut off. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the brakes off. And instead of doing it from from the guide pins over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it from the caliper bolts. So it should be two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the brake caliper bracket to the knuckle. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two, get the brakes out of the way, and get the axle nut off. We got the brake caliper out of the way. 
up here I just kind of zip tied it to the upper control arm so like I was saying earlier there are two caliper bracket bolts that go in each of these spots just take those out and you're able to pull out the whole caliper and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start disconnecting um, pretty much everything that holds the knuckle in place everything but the lower ball joint so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the tie rod castle nut right here I'm going to take this little castle nut off first I need to take this I already pre-bent it kind of straight so I could take it out but I'm going to start I'm going to take off this um, cotter pin as soon as the pin is out I'm going to unbolt that I'm pretty sure it's a 17 um, then I'll do the upper ball joint same thing with this one cotter pin out castle nut take that off then I'm going to separate them so usually even if you take this little uh, nut off you won't be able to just take the tie rod off uh, so what I'm gonna do is I have a little little hammer here I'm gonna go ahead and hit it on this little piece right here and eventually it'll loosen up and it, you should be able to take the tie rod off. If you can't do that, you can get this castle nut, put it upside down on the little stud, upside down till it's flush and then you can hit that and try to hammer it off. Um, but be careful and don't mushroom the threads here because then you'll have to buy a new tie rod and it'll be a pain. Um, and then same thing up here, I'm gonna hit it with a little hammer on this piece right here so basically you just hit whatever the ball joint is going through and it should loosen up enough that you can remove it from its place so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i'll see you guys in a minute all right so we got that off and it's actually loose up here it's just it has the weight of this on it so it kind of pushes it down and we got the tie rod off um and then now what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolt that holds in well, in my case, my coilover. In your case, it could be a coilover or your shock. So it's just the shock mount, shock mount. Um, so it's pretty sure it's a 17 on both sides. So just undo the nut and then you, <coughs> you should be able to pull it on the other side. Um, there's not a lot of weight on the suspension. So it should come out there should be no load on the suspension, so it should come out pretty easily. All right, so here's what we are left with. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the axle out of the hub because there are four bolts in the back of the hub that are in the back of the bearing that are connecting it to the knuckle. Um, and in order to get to those four bolts, we need to get rid of the axle. Or not get rid of it, but just get it out of its spline and move it to one of the sides so we can access the bolts. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit, hit the axle loose. Um, and now I'm gonna try and push the axle in. I'm gonna use like just one of my, one of my little ratchets right here. I'm gonna try and pull it out. I'm gonna try and push it out, I mean. I'm gonna try and push it, and as I push it with this, I'm gonna try and pull this out and to the side to kind of get leverage and try and push it all the way out without having to remove the whole axle and at the same time I might put some weight on it and bring it down like this um, the whole point is to just get the axle out of there you'll you'll see when you're doing this part what I mean all right and just like that we got the axle out of there um, what I did is I I like I was mentioning earlier, I kind of pulled down on this and like moved it off to the side as you can see. And then what I actually used is my pry bar, or not my pry bar, my breaker bar. I just kind of stuck it in here like this and I just pried on it till it came out. You do want to be careful that you don't overextend this and pop the axle in here out of its like, out of its spot um, in the CV joint right here. Um, just don't kind of overextend it <coughs> if that makes sense um, just kind of be careful if it looks like it's bent way too much then back up a little bit and and reconfigure 
as you can see we have the access to the bolts here's one two and then there's a third one here and a fourth one there um, those are 12 millimeter bolts um, and there's four of them so get those loose but don't take them all the way out so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get it loose and get it to peek out a little bit and then you're gonna have to use a hammer and hit it in to push the wheel bearing assembly out um, and it'll make sense when I pull it out why you have to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and do it and then I can kind of give you guys a visual when I have it out of the car alright so I think I can kind of explain it while it's still in the car um, I actually just kind of hit it with some PB blaster um, so that it can kind of loosen up a little bit hopefully it works out for me um, so as you can see I have this bolt over here. It's still screwed in a good amount, but it's not screwed in all the way. The reason I'm I did that is we need to kind of so the the wheel bearing in here is being held in by these four bolts, but it's also kind of pressed in in a way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out all four bolts. I am going to get this uh where is it? Uh, I'm gonna get a 12 millimeter deep socket and I'm gonna put it on a bolt then I'm gonna grab my hammer and I'm gonna hit it to kind of try and push the bearing out get the bearing out of there and I'm gonna do all four of them kind of in a circle so that it comes out straight and it doesn't just get stuck trying to go out sideways um, so that's how you get this out if you are from the north and rust is a big problem um, then this is probably gonna be a pain in the ass, but uh, you might need to get like a air hammer type of thing to help you push these bolts out. Um, but I will say, if you can get a spare of these bolts, like go to the store and get like a longer set of these bolts to push it out, that'd probably be ideal. Um, either that or get some spare ones of the same type. If you do go to the junkyard like I did to get your hub, you can just get a spare of those bolts just in case you ruin some of them, which is very possible. And you don't care about the wheel bearing if you ruin it or not, because you're putting a new one in anyway. All right, so unfortunately, I was having trouble um, getting the wheel bearing out. So um, I went ahead and removed my axle. Um, so my car is manual. So my axle is a short axle here, um, but if you have an automatic, I'm pretty sure it has a long axle that goes all the way to the transmission. But yeah, so I removed the axle just so I could have a little more space to get in here and um, work on it. And instead of using the bolt technique, I removed those and I'm actually gonna go ahead and just, I have enough space here that I can just get my hammer, just smack it right in there. Like I said, I don't, care if I damage the bearing I have brand new ones over there um, so I just need to get this out that's all I need I can damage anything I want except for the knuckle um, I will say though if you are going to be doing this be careful with the lower ball joint um, you don't want to damage that and I would think that if you put it all the way to lock over here and you start hammering at it that that might be a possibility um, so just be careful with that if you have an air hammer that's the best thing you could probably use to get this out that's probably what I would use if I had one but I unfortunately don't so I have to use a, a man hammer and uh, get it out so I'm gonna keep going at it um, and I'll see you guys in a little bit once it's out and just like that we have it out as you can see in there there's a really thick buildup of rust um, that's why I didn't want to come out and so now that I have this out so I can kind of show you guys how this kind of works um, So th This right here is the hub this outer layer and The rotor is bolted onto it from the front, but you can't take it out Unless you take off the bearing so it's kind of sandwiched in between the bearing and the hub um, you would be able to take it out, but in order to take it out, you'd have to remove the hub from the bearing, which would ruin your bearing. So you'd have to get a new bearing and you'd have to do this anyway. So that is why I'm just getting rid of it all. 
and I got the new parts that in the future all I'm gonna have to do is replace the rotor by itself like you're traditionally able to and not have to deal with this whole mess. I could have just bought a new rotor, did all this, get a new bearing, but then in the future, I would have had to do this whole job again just to do my brakes, which would have sucked. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this surface to get it nice and clean for the new bearing. And once it's all clean, uh, we can start and actually putting new parts on the car, which is always the best part I'm pretty much halfway. All right, so I got this pretty cleaned up. It's by no means perfect, but you should have seen it before. I mean, you did see it before. Before it was caked on there. Now it's it's pretty it's pretty clean. It's a lot cleaner than it was, and it's good enough in my opinion. Um, but I had to use a wire wheel and a little Scotch Brite pad um, to get all that gunk out of there. Um, and what I'm gonna do. Uh, to prevent it from rusting together like that, I would use anises, but I don't have any. Um, but I'm just going to use a little bit of grease to kind of help it go in there and to kind of prevent it from seizing up in the future. And I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on the four bolts. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the hub on. Oh, and I forgot to mention. So you're going to get the hub either from the junkyard or online. Um, and then you're gonna get the wheel bearing from either your auto parts store or online like I did and then you have to Either press them in yourself if you have a press at home If not, there is a way to do it like on a bench vise with like a hammer, but you have to be really careful I didn't show how I did it. I did it the vice method with a hammer, but I'd say I'd say your best bet is to take it to a shop and just have it pressed um, if you don't have a press yourself, um, it shouldn't be too expensive because um, it, it shouldn't take them that long. But if you do do the hammer method, if you know how to do it, just be careful. And if you do know how to do it already, then you already know the what goes along with that. If you don't know how to do it, I'll, I'll put an Eric the Car Guy uh, video in the description that will show you pretty much how he does it and... You can take his opinion on the matter and his expertise if you would like to. Oh, and real quick, um, when you put this back in, the new hub, you want to, kind of how I was saying, to take it out, how you go in a circle type of thing or like across. Um, just tighten it slowly. Don't tighten it all the way with one. Uh, tighten it slowly and go in cross patterns just to bring it in evenly. Um, so it doesn't get stuck or do anything weird and you should be good It shouldn't be that hard to to press in or press in um, It should be a pretty smooth process All right, just a little update. Um, I got the wheel bearing in it's all nice and tight Everything is good. I put the axle back in as you can see and I just got it in through here So I put the little I was starting to tighten this down I'm probably gonna impact it right now. Like I said, 36 millimeter socket. Um, so now, basically, I'm just gonna put everything back together that I took apart. And once I get all the suspension put back together, we're basically just doing a normal brake job. That's it. We're using the new rotors. And other than that, it's just your standard brake job. You just put the rotor in, you get the new brake pads and the new new brake hardware and all that, and it's just a normal brake job. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up, and I'll come back right now with a finished product. And just like that, I'm for the most part done with the whole, I mean, with everything. Um, all I have to do is tighten up that axle nut, um, and break in the brake pads. And also I wanted to mention that a really cool thing about these brake rotors, the QuietCast Bosch that I showed you guys earlier, um, usually normal brake rotors come with like oil on them to prevent rusting during the shipping process. Um, but these QuietCast from Bosch just have this finish on them that prevents it from rusting. It's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, because there's no messy brake cleaning I have to do. There's also no oil on your hands when you 
pick up the brake rotor, take it out of its little bag. It's pretty cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the wheel on, uh, torque it all, everything, tighten down the axle nut and get that really nice and tight. I'm gonna flip the car around and do the other side and we're pretty much done with with the whole swap i mean most it's like it's technically a swap because you're using parts from another vehicle but it's i mean you're basically just replacing the hub that's all it is because you're using the same wheel bearing um or at least the same car wheel bearing you're just replacing the hub and the brake rotors and that's it everything else is the same it's pretty cool how they do that um how it's interchangeable like that if you ever do get under a 98 Acura CL the suspension in that car is I don't want to say it's identical just in case there is like a couple little differences but it's borderlining the same as this car like like if I were to show you this that I'm showing you right now you, and I didn't tell you it was a Honda Accord then uh, it, it could be an Acura CL I could tell you and it would look exactly the same um, so yeah I don't know why they didn't just do these normal rotors on the Hondas. Um, I wish they would have. I wouldn't have had to do this today. Um, but either way, um, it's done now, so I don't ever have to worry about it again. And if you do this, you won't either. All right, and just like that, both sides are done. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and when I drive to work tonight, I'm gonna break in the brake pads. Look at this, I just got this new uh, this new Milwaukee electric ratchet. I first time using it. This was actually my Christmas present. It was freaking. It's so sick. It made it so much easier. I'll leave, I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out and uh, cop it for yourself. Um, honestly, just really good tool to have. I've been wanting to get one for super long. We're all done here today. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out if you have one of these cars and I've found that online it's kind of hard to find exactly what you need to do this swap. Like it's hard to find the exact parts that you need for this. I'm going to link everything down below that I used and or other alternatives you can use and like I said I'll put the part number to the hub which is the hardest thing to find. Um, and I'll put the two links or I'll put the link for uh, where you can buy it for really expensive OEM um, supplier if you don't have a junkyard near you that carries Acuras then um, you might have to do that but I, I I'm you should be able to find one here and there but yeah it's gonna be it for me once again thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time peace